Sorry. I made my jumpsuit. If you are part of my Facebook group, I did tell you I was going to do this. Um, I haven't styled it at all, so it doesn't have a belt or anything, but I absolutely love it. And as you can tell by the fact that my hands are in my pockets, it has pockets and they're deep. They come all the way down to here. Uh, it's got this cute tie at the back. Um, yeah, so if you'd like to see how to make this fabulous jumpsuit, please stay tuned. It is a Butterick. B6220. I'm not sure if it's still in print or not, but it was in my cupboard and so we just had to make it. So if you'd like to see how to make it, please stay tuned. Radio. So I have cut out all the pieces and I have interfaced the neck facing as it told me to do. Uh, now I've never made this before, so we're going to make it together. Which could be disastrous or it could be fine. It does say that it's a super easy pattern. Um... I love that this, it says, this page is intentionally left blank, except by writing that, it's no longer blank. That is all in Spanish, so I don't need that piece. So it looks like it's pretty simple. It doesn't have many pieces, which is cool. I've got my elastic. I'll be using knitted elastic today because it's all that I can find in my house. And I've already been out this morning, so I'm not going to go again. Uh, so this is 12 mil, which is a half inch knitted elastic. Um, knitted's good. It's nice and flexible. doesn't hurt you too much. That's all about the cutting. All right. So fuse. Step one, fuse this stuff together, which I have done. So step two, pin it to the front of the bodice. So the pieces are all quite large. So that's... It's got the sleeves included, which means it's less pieces to make stuff. And I kind of like that. This should be a nice quick project. I hope at least. So we need to take our front, which was cut on the fold. And then the V, we are going to pin right sides together. And I'm going to use pins today. So I have removed Scully from the immediate area. Um, and in the, even though I have different coloured skulls, they're all named Scully. I'm not very creative there. So I'm going to pin that and I'm going to put my pins in across. Now I know some people don't like to sew over their pins. I am not that person. I'm pretty happy to do it. So I'm going to pin the centre because obviously that's a very key important part that needs to match up. And then I'm going to work my way up. And out to the edge. I could also pin the edge and then work towards the center. All of such things work. Um, I do use pins on slippery fabric like this. Uh, so this is a, I think it's a crepe or a poly, it's polyester something. Uh, but I just really loved the color and it was on sale. I think it was $14 a meter at Spotlight, but they've currently got 40% 40, 40 off. So that makes it insanely cheap. I'm using my skinny foot today just because I should try and use all the things I buy. No point in buying them if, you know, you don't use them. So I've got my skinny foot and I'm using Rasant thread in a dark navy. I actually had to go down the street and buy navy because I didn't have any. So it says, whoops, to pin these together and then sew the neck. So I am going to use, so generally speaking, sewing patterns come with a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. So that is between the half and the three quarter, but quite often I will just use half inch. And I know that sounds bad, but it's more convenient if you ask me. So I'm going to take out the pins as I go, apparently, and then I'm going to get perfectly in line with the V and then needle up, uh, foot up, needle down, and pivot so that I can continue up the other side. Now you can sew over your pins. I'm not sure why I'm not. My brain is just not. So I'm going to trim off those tails. And then I'm pretty sure it's supposed to clip at the V so that it's going to be nice and pointy. Clip it. Excellent. 
So I'm going to grab my class A scissors and I'm just going to clip down to but not through the stitches. Like so. And so we're going to clip it like this. So now when I turn it over and under, it's going to sit lovely. And you're going to have a nice pointy V because that's what we want. See how that's really, really nice sitting V? I know it doesn't necessarily look like it right now. So it now says to understitch this. So understitching means we're going to sew all of the seam allowance to which side do they want? Understitch facing, turn facing to inside press. Okay, so we're going to stitch that seam allowance to our facing piece. And because I've got a skinny foot, I'm just going to use the width of the foot as my guide. And I'm going to make sure that this is sitting smoothly so that we get some nice stitching. Needle down, because again we need to pivot. And then we're going to back stitch at that end. And so now when we turn it to the back, it's supposed to sit down. So I do still need to give that a bit of an iron, but we have our front, which looks Lovely. See, look at that. It's going to sit under where we want. Turn facing inside and press. Now I am not super happy with the fact that I've got a raw edge here. So I'm going to come, actually, and I'm going to overlock. So I'm going to overlock this raw edge when I have to get up and go to the overlocker. Because... I don't like raw edges, it means it's not machine washable, and I am all about machine washable. Alright, so I will overlock it when I get up and have to overlock some other stuff. But we have done everything on page one, and there's only two pages, so that's exciting. Um, so we're going to get our ties is next. So I've actually just cut it as one really, really long one, because I decided it would be quicker to sew. And then I'm just going to chop off. That's the salvage edge, that white bit. Right, so I'm going to put it right sides together. And I'm going to stitch along the end. Back stitching, of course. And then, without stretching it, I'm going to sew all the way down. Making sure that the raw edges line up. So this is trickier than it looks because the fabric's slippery. Um, I'm very used to doing bags and poplin dresses and sateen where the fabric doesn't really move on you. So this is a little bit of a challenge, really. Now I'm going to be able to cut these shorter. I don't... I didn't do the pattern ones. I'm just kind of making up my own ties. They're going to be skinny and I'm making it really, really long and then I'll just cut them down. The pattern does have it, but by the time I realised I didn't see it and cut it, I'd packed it up and I was feeling lazy. And I figure how hard can a tie be to do. So I'm going to sew across the end and back stitch. And then trim off the excess because, again, that was a bit of a salvage edge situation. And then making sure I have managed to stitch everywhere, which I am just checking now, I am going to put it in half and trim it in half like that. I also want to trim down the seam allowance at the ends so that they are easier to turn. And then I have this fancy thing called a loop turner. So you can get these from Spotlight. They're about $7. Well, they were $7 when I bought it. I don't know how much they are now. And I'm just going to thread all of this on. 
and then hook on the end of the fabric to the little hook part that it's got and then hopefully it's going to drag it back through like this so you want to try and keep it taut once you've got it going and it will literally just turn through your strap that quickly done I love loop turners I use it for a lot of things I use it to drag elastic through stuff as well not just for skinny straps so again I'm gonna so it's got a little hook on the end and then it's got a case that'll close the hook so it won't catch on everything as you're coming back so you want to grab a little bit of the fabric and then close the hook and the hardest bit is always getting this first bit over so you kind of have to coax it to do it once you get it started it's right to go you don't want to grab too much fabric but you also don't want to grab too little or it'll just tear through it and then as soon as you get it over that edge like that you can then just so the the hooks here and i'm pulling the fabric over the other part like so and it just turns itself through which I think is amazing all right next step is put it up the right way might help on the outside pin one tie end to bodice back matching up the circles um so I did actually mark the circles on my pattern So this is my pattern piece here. And so on it, I should have up the top here, this circle. So this is the circle they're talking about. And so this is the edge we have to match up. I probably should have moved the camera over a little bit so that you can see better what I'm doing. Apparently I'm doing that a lot today. All right, I'm gonna move the camera, hold on. So, we're going to lay this down, and then I'm just going to fold this back until I get to the circle, and I'm going to put the raw edge, not the folded edge, here, like this. Does it go on this way? No, it goes on this way. Right, so raw edge to raw edge, and I'm just going to pin that in place with a pin. I always do three when I'm trying to hold things that I know I'm going to move it around. I stab the pin in, out, and then back in again. It just gives a better hold. So that's one. And then we're going to get the other side. I know this looks fiddly, but it's just because it's a floaty fabric. I've always had to like extra do things with floaty fabric because we're not friends, which is unfortunate. So. Here's my, my dot up here. So I'm just, again, going to fold this down so it's in place like that. And then I'm going to add a pin to hold it in place. Now, if I was using Wonder Clips, I tend to want to do two to hold something in place. Uh, but because it is fabric, we're fine to just do the one. All right. Finish back hem with a narrow hem. So we're going to do a double folded hem. So what that means is we're going to fold it under and then under again, like a roll hem. But first I'm going to baste this in place so I can get rid of that pin because the pin is going to make it much, much more difficult to try and do a fancy roll hem. So I'm just going to stitch that back and forth a couple of times just to lock it into place. Uh, as long as you do it within the seam allowance, that's fine. And then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to fold it over and then over again to give us a narrow hem and it's going to hide the raw edges. So we're going to tuck it once like this and then once more over again. Now you don't have to have a roll hem foot to be able to do a roll hem. You just need patience, which funnily enough I don't really have. but. 
I find these pretty quick to do. Always stop with your needle down so that you can readjust and try not to stretch your fabric too much if you can help it. Stop with the needle down and you'll find as once you've got started you'll find the fabric kind of just wants to follow the rest of the fabric and be folded. So like here already it's already starting to fold for me which makes it much much easier. And then we're just trying very hard not to stretch it because it is a creepy fabric and you can stretch it and if you stretch it you're going to get like a wonky looking hem. I also probably could have overlocked this and then just turned it under the ones or I could have overlocked it and then done the roll hem because it would have made it firmer but I think that worked out pretty well. So now from the outside we have no raw edge on that back and then the tie is also attached so that we can tie it up. Now let's do the other side. So this time I'll be starting from this end because I always like to fold over and have the bulk of the fabric out of my way. Now you could probably pin this as you go um, I probably would find that personally more tricky because then the pins would be in the way while you're trying to stitch. So we're going to do a couple of stitches and back stitch. Stop with the needle down. Now you always want to try and put as much of the weight of the fabric on the table so that it's not pulling down. Pulling is the worst. But it's also tricky because it's not a terribly big piece, but it's a stretchy fabric. So you just, I'm kind of using my arm to smush it as I'm sewing. And yes, I did say smush it. So tuck it under and again, try not to stretch it, stitch it down. And I didn't tack or baste this um, strap down, so I might have a bit of trouble when I'm doing this part. I'm going to grab a wonder clip because it's less stabby so I can get closer to that area. So I highly recommend that you should have basted both of them and not just the one. And then the last little bit, I also could have just backstitched um, and tied off and then basted it and continued on with the roll hem or narrow hem or whatever they want to call it. But it still worked. It looks fabulous. And see how I haven't stretched it so it's sitting nice and flat on the table. It's not like a lettucey crawl, uh, not crawling, curling is the word I was after there. All right. Trim that off, and so then the next step says um, eight. Open out front facing at overarm edges, pin bodice back to bodice front at overarms, matching notches. So I'm imagining that means this part here. It's not being super clear what overarm is. Uh, but I'm guessing that this part here is the arm because that would be the little curve part will be like the underarm part. So the overarm is up the top near where the strap is. So we want to take this and stitch it to the facing. Now, I'm about to stitch here. So what I want to do now is I'm going to go, I'm actually up to the part where I'm going to go and overlock this so that it won't fray when I wash it because I'm about to tuck that under and then stitch it into the overarm. So I'm going to overlock it and I'm ready. Right that up. is all overlocked so I'm no longer worried that it's going to have issues in the washing machine. So I'm just going to pin the facing back at the edges. 
on both sides so that it's going to stay where I want it to until we're up to pinning it. I'm also going to trim off those tails. So I'm just pinning the facing to the what they're calling the overarm, which is this top edge. You could also call it the shoulder part if you wanted to. Anyway, so I'm going to grab this. And we want the V to be in line with this raw edge. And then we're going to put right sides together and pin this to here. So I'm just going to use these two pins. So you've got to make sure that your, your edge here is lining up. And then this outer edge here. Now you can use as many or as few pins as you want. I'm just going to use those three and then we're going to stitch it. So again, seam allowance, stitch, back stitch. And you want to try and not let it stretch when you're sewing, which I know is tricky when it's this kind of fabric. I'm kind of almost pushing it in. And then we're going to back stitch. So there you go, that time I run over the pins. So I've now got like half a thing. So let's do the same to the other side. So here's our, here's the top of the V. So this is where we're going to attach our next back piece. This is the overarm up here. So we're going to put right sides together like this. And I'm going to line up this edge first. Where the pins are, so the facing and the narrow hem we just did all lines up together. And then I can come and put another pin at this end to make sure that that's going to line up together. Like that. Pop it under the needle. So I'm going to stitch and back stitch. This time I'm starting at the thicker end. It didn't really matter. For me, it's all just about bulk out of the machine, so I don't, I don't really mind which side I start from. So again, I'm making sure that it's not pulling as it's stitching, and then we're going to back stitch. And so now you should be able to put it and lean it over your head. All right. Turn facing towards inside, turn shoulder seam towards facing. So instead of all of that that they're asking, I am actually just going to overlock it because that's why I own an overlocker, to make my life a bit easier. So I'm just going to overlock straight across all of these parts on the top. Oh yeah. All overlocked. So now it just wants us to top stitch so that this narrow hem, the stitching just continues. So I'm just going to start at one end, right where the stitching ends, here. Stitch, actually, thread my needle would help. Navy thread's quite hard to see against the navy, which I suppose is what we wanted, but still. Right, so we're going to stitch, we're going to back stitch, and then I'm just going to stitch around the edge so that the, the seam all matches. Basically is all we're trying to do, make it match. So I'm holding it all nice and flat underneath, even though we've understitched. And then I'm gonna stitch down there and then pivot. And then we're gonna stitch up the other side of the neckline. We have already understitched all this. Um, so it should be pretty easy to get to sit right. And then line it up with the other stitching and back stitch and then pull it out. So now the stitching looks continuous all the way around. So we're doing view B and C, which is the jumpsuit. So pin back to front at underarms, matching the notches and stitch. 
So we're going to go right sides together. So here's the V in this hand here. So we're just going to fold this over itself. This is our armhole here. So we want to stitch this little kind of corner curve on both sides. Now I am going to pin this because I reckon that curve and this fabric are going to give me a little bit of grief. And they're going to try and shift apart when I try and do the curve. So I'm going to come in to the curve and add a pin on the diagonal so it all stays still like that. So we're going to do this to both sides. So again, I'm trying not to pull the fabric. It's very important that we don't do that. Right, and then I'm going to lift up my foot to help get around that curve. Pull the last pin out and back stitch. So that's one. So now we're going to do the other. So we're going to flip this over. So right sides are together. And then I'm going to add three pins again. One. You'll also notice when I put pins in, I always make sure that it's not like up flush against the fabric like that. I make sure it kind of sits out a little bit. It's easy to grab and it's less likely to get caught in your machine. Um, and by having the pins out, you can use this hand to grab them. Whereas if I was to put them in the other way, you wouldn't be able to pull them out as you're sewing. So if you don't like sewing over pins, always make sure the ball points out of your fabric like that. So then again, I'm going to start, doesn't matter which side, you can flip it over and start the same way or the opposite way. It's all the same. The tail was caught then, so it made it look all bunchy. And then I'm going to take out the pin and hold it, but not pull it because we don't want to stretch it. Don't know why I picked this fabric. It's not super difficult to work with, but you do have to be very careful not to stretch it. Okay, finish lower edge of sleeve with a hem. And then we're going to crisscross it. Okay, so I'm going to overlock that first because, again, with the overlocking, if you don't have an overlocker and you only have a straight stitch machine, use your zigzag scissors. Um, it's not going to completely prevent fraying, but it is going to slow it down a lot. Uh, so you're more likely to be able to wash on a gentle machine cycle. Um, this will just get thrown in with everything else because I love overlocking. So I'm going to do that. I'll be right so back. all overlocked. So I'm turning it right sides out. I also need to cut off the tails of my overlocking or surging, depending on where you live. is dependent on what you call it. Serger and overlocker is the same thing. So this is now the arm opening. So I'm going to have it right sides out, and I'm going to start at the bottom. So like the underarm seam part, end of the sleeve. And we're just going to do... A roll hem again so we're going to fold it over and over again now again if I wanted to I could overlock this and then just tuck it under the once but unless it's a joining seam I am going to attempt to do it all the way the pattern says but an overlocker would definitely make it a little bit quicker you could just overlock around and then turn it under the once But this will also look cute, so it's fine. You can also use a roll hem foot. If you've got a roll hem foot, now's a good time to pull it out and play with it. I probably should have. It's too late now. So I'm just folding it in half, like over and then over again. And I'm just keep moving the sleeve around because we're doing a circle. 
So just keep moving it as we're going. Always stopping with the needle down. Needle down. No, apparently I'm only stopping on the up part today. So because this fabric's stretchy, it is actually helping a little bit. If I stretch it, it kind of does the roll hem for me and then I just release it. So now that I'm back to the start, I'm going to back stitch, pull it out, trim my tails off nice and close. And that is now one side done. So now we just need to do our other side. So again, we want to face it out the right way. And then we just fold over that top bit so that we can get to the seam underneath. So we're going to fold it over and over again. Hold my tails so they stay out of my way. And then we're just going to tuck and sew. Stopping with our needle down. I can even trim off the tails now that I can get to them. So now I don't have to think about them when we get back to this start. It's whenever you feel like it. So again, tuck it under. That was a good tuck. Did like a quarter of the sleeve that time around. So there's not much left. So again, if I pull this, it's tucking. I'm just sticking my nail under to make sure it's tucked flat. And then I can put my fingers on it like pins and then release the pressure so that I'm not stretching while I sew. But the stretching helps to get the tuck happening. So I can trim off those tails and that random one I can see. And so now the arms are all um, finished. So from this side, now what we want to do is we're going to overlap this crisscross part. Now on the pattern, it actually comes with a marking for this exact moment. So there was a random line on it. This is how much is meant to overlap at the back. So I can just line this up. Keeping in mind you've had some seam allowance take off. And I'm just going to mark that on both sides. There's one. And then I'll bring this one out and flip it over. A lot of people mark this before you start. I'm clearly not that person. And then there. So those are the two marks. So we just need to overlap that at the back here. So I'm going to pin that to that edge. And then that one should line up quite nicely just there. Like that. Pin it. Ow. Then I'm just going to base those two together. Like that. So now, technically, I could put it on if I wanted to. It's got this crisscross at the back. I like it. I'm just making sure that is correct. Oh, no, it's not correct. Right, so the center point that I found, that's actually the center point. So they're meant to cross over evenly there and there. There you go. That's what happens when I don't read it. Okay. So, lining up with the V... That bit needs to be in the center, and that bit needs to be in the center. Love it. So the, basically the points line up. So I'm going to use three pins, and I'm going to pin the center and then the two edges, and then base that together. I did think it was a very large opening. So I'm just going to base this right along the edge. So I'm basically doing an eighth of an inch seam allowance 
just to join all this together. You also want to make sure that the rest of it is out of your way so you're not stitching it closed and you won't be able to get into it. And I have done that before, which is why I'm mentioning it. Sometimes if I'm sewing in a hurry, I'll just, I don't know, miss bits. Luckily, this week I've taken off basically work and I'm just making fun things. So there we go, the back now crisscrosses. So we are up to the right sides together, lap it over, face the lower edge, and along the center. I don't know how I feel about basing it in the center. I'm gonna leave that. Why would you base it in the center? Why would you not just sew it? It wants us to sew a line up here. I don't know, I feel that's weird. I'll do it, but under slight protest, because I think it's weird. So I'm just going to find the centre. And stitch it to like there. I think that's just so it doesn't gape as much, which would make sense. Okay. That's our top, so we're going to put our top half away and we're going to grab our bottom half. So this has pockets, which I love. I always love pockets. Can't go wrong with pockets. Everything should have pockets. So I've cut four. So I cut four of this shape, which gives us two pockets. And they are just going to line up along the top edge, which makes it easy. We don't have to measure where they have to go. Excellent. So we're going to grab one of our leg pieces. Now it actually doesn't matter which leg you grab because we're going to stitch all of them anyway. So you don't want to stitch it to the part where the curve because this is your bot seam or your crutch seam. This is the front because it's the smaller one. The back one's always pointier. Just so you know. So I'm going to put one of the pant legs on the table, right sides up like this. And then I'm going to grab one of the pockets pieces and I'm going to stitch the straight edge to the straight edge, but I'm gonna stop half an inch from this bottom. So I wanna stop sewing like here, half an inch. It's hard to do that backwards. I'm gonna line up this top because the top of the pocket will get sewn into the waist seam so they won't flop around. So like that. And I'm just gonna stop there and I'm gonna back stitch. Always back stitch, people. Always. Locks everything in for you. Okay, so that's that one done. Then I'm gonna grab the other leg piece from that set and I'm gonna grab the pocket I threw on the ground accidentally so again we need right sides which is this one on the opposite side to the crutch bend and I'm saying that mainly for new sewers uh, just check that because again when I was new to sewing, I have done that and stitch them to the wrong side. And stitch all the way up to the top, back stitch. So that's one lot of legs done. Now we're going to do the other half. So see, see how the, the curve in this one's deeper? That's your butt seam. And yes, I call it my butt seam. I'm okay with it. Right, so that's for the other leg. That's for this leg. So I need this one for this side. Like that, line it up. Under we go. Now, crepey fabric may take me longer to sew, 
but it's definitely going to be worth it. This is going to be an adorable jumpsuit that I can wear summer or winter. Um, winter I could just add layers. It's like a fancy coat or something. Okay, last one. Now this got, this little white bit is actually technically my selvage edge, but my theory was I was going to sew it out anyway, which I am. But I was trying to get the most out of my fabric, so that's why that's there. Um, it's not all the way of the selvage edge. It's This particular fabric had like a one inch white strip. Actually, it was probably deeper than one inch. It was huge. But by using that tiny little amount, I was able to get the legs next to each other, which saved me enough fabric that the leftover will make an entire top. Because I do love this fabric. I think it's fabulous. It's not advised to use your um, selvage edge, usually because it's a different colour and it'll stick out. But it'll be fine. Okay. Done that. So we are up to here. So now what I want to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to overlock just that section that I've done because, again, I don't want it to fray. So I'm going to go overlock all four legs and then we're going to stitch it all together. Right ahead just to see how the pattern wanted to do the legs because I tend to do legs differently to some of them. But they do it my way, which is awesome. So these are the two back pieces because they've got the deep crotch point. So we want one, one back and one front. And we're going to stitch from the point down to the leg. So we're stitching the inner leg seam, essentially, right now. We're going to do that first. I love it when they do pants this way. Otherwise, you've got to do, like, weird stuff. And yes, I call it weird stuff because it's weird stuff. They tuck one leg into the other one and I don't know. I never do pants that way. I'm not a fan. I always do them this way. So it's good that the pattern is this way. So now that I'm about halfway, I'm going to come and match up that bottom to make sure that I don't overstretch one or that they become out crooked. We don't want that. With overlocking, like everything, I do tend to chain stitch the overlocking. Just like I'm going to chain stitch these. That's one leg in, and then I'm going to grab the other leg, and we're going to do from crutch curve down, or you can do it bottom to top. It doesn't actually matter. I'm just going to lay them right sides together, like that, and I'm just going to slip this one straight in after the other one. Needle down, readjust. Come to the end, make sure they're joined. You can even fold it over so you can use your hand up the top here. Trim that off. Again, now we're going to overlock. So I always overlock. I try and go back and forth as little as possible. But every time we're going to cross over a seam, you have to overlock first. So our next seam is our crutch curve. So because it's going to intersect here, I have to overlock here next. So I'm going to go do that. So we want to open these out now so that they're a big flat piece of fabric. And then I'm going to do the same to the other one. And I'm going to match up this center crutch seam. So this seam here, the one that we just created, we're now going to put them together, right sides together like this. And if all's gone to plan, you should have two short curves and two big curves that match up. And if not, you've sewn your legs together wrong. The other way you do it is you accidentally sew two back pieces together instead of a front and a back. 
so you will have to unpick it if you do that. And yes, I have done that. That's why I'm telling you. Right. So I've done the center. Now I'm going to come and pin the edge. Now, again, if you want to, you can put like a gazillion pins all the way down here so it won't shift on you. I will use a few pins, but if this was like poplin or pajama pants, I probably wouldn't bother with pins. I do the two in the center because it's nice when your crutch is like perfectly matched up. You feel quite proud. So I always match that bit. Um, but otherwise, if it's a stiffer fabric, I tend to not need to pin. It's not even that I'm being lazy. It's just I have progressed to the point where I don't need as many pins. All right, so now we're going to sew the big U curve, which is our crutch. I'm going to start and I'm going to backstitch because we always backstitch. And we're coming down. I'm making sure everything's still lined up. And then I'm going to move some of this bulk from my lap to the table so that it's not going to pull as we're going past our joint crutch part. Now obviously nobody's going to look at the crutch part except you to see if it's matched up. Like if you go, oh I made it, nobody's going to be like, show me your crutch. But it is still a nice feeling to have it all beautiful. It's the name of the game, right? Let's see how I went. Ah, oh, yes. All lined up. Okay, so now we need to overlock that as well. Again, if you don't have an overlocker, you, if you've got um, a domestic machine, they usually have some form of an overlocker stitch. You just want to remember you're trying to do it on the edge of the fabric and not close to here. So I've seen a lot of people when they're zigzagging, they'll zigzag like right in the middle. The idea is, is to catch the edges so you suck it in like an overlock. All right, and I overlock that. I'll be back. So now that for the bit that sometimes confuses some people, what you want to do is you want to hold it so you've got one side pocket in one hand and one side pocket in the other. And then you're going to run your fingers into the center to get to this middle seam. So this is either your middle front or middle back seam. You want to follow that. And I'm, I'm explaining this the way that I had to learn before I could do it quickly. So you want to follow this seam all the way until you grab the opposite. So if you grab the front first, you've now got the center back seam. And then pull that together. And you'll notice it looks like inside out pants once you do that. That is obviously the name of the game. So now we're going to match up the seam where the pockets start and add a pin. And then you want to match up where the pockets end and you're going to pin. To there, to there, and we're going to pin. The reason we're pinning it is so it can't move because these are like defining points of your garment. It doesn't matter if you totally botch up the shape of the pocket. Only you will know when you put your hand in it. But these parts, you want them to look fabulous. So sometimes, I don't know if you saw that, but it was a bit kind of gathered. If you just pull on your overlocking, it tends to just straighten itself out, which I think is marvellous. All right, so I'm going to start at the pocket and just seal off that top edge. You probably don't need to, but I want to, so it doesn't annoy me. That's who I am. And then I'm going to put all of this weight on the table, match up my pockets, and around we go. Now, you don't have to do as big of a seam if you don't want to. It just means you'll have bigger pockets. So if you only do a quarter inch seam, it means your pocket's going to be a quarter inch bigger. And who doesn't love giant pockets, right? So I'm now rounding. I'm going to readjust this to see if you can see any better. I'm now rounding where I've pinned. So I'm coming into like the base of the pocket. 
So you want to literally stitch next to the last stitch that you did and that completely seals the pocket and then we're going to needle down foot up and pivot and then we're going to sew down the leg and so now you've got a nice crisp little turn in there now these seams are quite forgiving because these pants aren't super tight uh, so if your seam is a little bit off or if your leg's a little bit wonky, the type of fabric that I've used, you're probably not even going to notice it anyway. Um, jumpsuits, looser jumpsuits are definitely more forgiving. Ones that are like fitted with zips and stuff, not as much. Probably wouldn't start there on your first ever jumpsuit. This is a wonderful one. I'm quite enjoying this pattern actually. And it's still pretty quick. Obviously it would be quicker if I wasn't explaining everything. Um, but I reckon a beginner sewer could still knock this out in an afternoon. I have faith in you. I don't know if the pattern's still um, printed or not though. I haven't actually checked that. I have a lot of patterns that are discontinued and by a lot I mean like a real lot so again I'm coming in and making sure that that corner of the pocket part is super lined up so it looks fabulous and I flipped it over so I get to start at the top again so it don't have to stitch across here but I want to just so it's sealed and I don't have to worry about it it also means that when I'm up to stitching it somewhere else, both sides are going to come like at the same time. I'm not going to accidentally miss a side because they're already stitched together, so they have to come. So again, we're coming in to the bottom of those stitches from when we stitched the pockets on. And then we're doing a right hand turn and stitching down the legs. I do always like to stitch down the legs and not up, but you can do it. There's nothing saying you can't, I just prefer not to. You notice I can do both sides of these before I have to overlock again. Match that up. So I'm going to need to overlock again, uh, so I'm literally going to overlock. I'm not going to do this top bit because that's going to get stuck to the side and I'll do that later, but I am going to do the side of the pocket and then down on both sides. I'm going to overlock those and then we're just up to construction and hem the bottom. So again, with the hemming, if you are overlocking, you can just overlock the bottom and then turn it up the once and stitch it. I will be doing the roll hem because I've done it everywhere else. So. Before we go attaching the top to the bottom, we may as well hem our legs just because now it feels like a good time. So I'm going to turn it right sides out like so. Trim off all these tails which are from the overlocker. The overlocker has a cutter on it uh, but it's just not a very good cutter. So I have this problem all the time where I'm trying to use it, but it's just not very good. So it always leaves like a single thread kind of dangling. All right, so we're gonna stitch and back stitch. And then we're just gonna go around and tuck under. So we're just doing a double fold. Stopping with the needle down and then bringing it back around so that we're not fighting the fabric. Needle down. And then when we get back to the start, we backstitch. 
trim off our tails and then trim off those start tails as well. And that is now one leg done. Now you can also do this at the end. So if you have shorter legs, then like when you buy clothes, the legs are always a little bit long. You'd hem it last. So you'd put it on and then hem the bottom and then off you go so that you don't have to hem it twice. Uh, but I'm lucky, I'm super lucky in that I am like the stock standard size for patterns. I've never had something that's like super crutchy or too long. Apparently I'm just average, which I'm not mad about. Makes my life easier. Tucking under those bits, going around. Back to the start and back stitch. I always start on a seam, mainly because it's a good place to hide your back stitching, especially if you haven't got like a dark color that's blending everything in so well. Okay. So, push out pockets in, and then we're gonna look at our crutch. So the side that's deepest is the back. So this is the back, so this is the front. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin my pockets to the front piece, which is very, very important. Otherwise, when you put your hands in, you'll be going around and grabbing your own butt. So we want to just, I'm just going to use two pins and I'm going to pin them to the front. So then now when we use them, they're like normal pockets. See, and because I um, stitched those two together before, I now also have no issues trying to do this bit. Now I'm going to do my waist seam differently to the pattern because I'm all about efficiency slash I'm lazy. So I'm going to sew my elastic in at the same time as I show it, sew it shut. Right. I'm going to turn the pants back inside out because it's going to be easier to slot my top half into the bottom rather than the other way around because there's less fabric. So we're going to go and we're going to find our sides and our front. So this is the front. So that front center goes at the front center seam like that. And we're gonna pin it. And then we're going to get our side seam, which is under our arm part. I know it doesn't really look like that on the screen right now, but just trust me on this. And then we're going to go and put it at the pocket, which is also the side seam. And I'm going to add it into my uh, pins I've already got here. Now again, it's nice to have these seams at the side line up. It's just nice sewing. Not all patterns are written this way, though. Sometimes they have, like... Some crazy seams going on, which is also okay. Right, so we're going to do the same to our other arm. So here's the arm. Here's my pocket. Join that to there. Add it in. Like that. Whoops, dropping pins everywhere. Okay, so now it should all start coming together. So I'm just tucking all of the, the shirt inside of the pants. So it's now upside down. I'm also going to make sure that the ties are not gonna get stitched. So I'm gonna tuck them in. And then that center line that we stitched before, funnily enough, now matches up with that back. So it was handy. I'm, so, I'm happy I did it now. Hello, puppy. And so now if you want to, you can continue around and add some more pins. <coughs> yes, puppy. So I'm just going to add two extra pins between it all. 
He's like shaking his head at me. I'm not sure what he wants. What's up, puppy? Then I'm gonna come around here. I'm gonna add just one more in here because the pocket pins there are quite a few of. Hello. What do you want? We're not going outside right now. I'm a little bit busy. If you say the W word, he goes mental. Don't ya? Uh -huh. What? Come here. This is Knuckles. For anybody that hasn't met Knuckles before in other videos, he's a nutter, aren't ya? Hey? And very, very needy. All right, go on. Rack off. And yes, he understands that sentence, which I thought was very cool. I accidentally taught it to him, but I'm okay with it. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew. And again, making sure the tie is in the pants so I don't accidentally stitch it. I'm actually going to sew three eighths. Oh no, it's got the full seam allowance. Never mind. Okay, I'm not. I'm going to do my half inch. I'm just starting anywhere because we're going completely around. And I'm going to pull out my pins as I go, of which there are many. This is one of those times where I actually enjoy pins because it's just holding everything in place. I understand that's what pins do all the time, but pinning legs would annoy me, whereas pinning a waist feels completely different. I know it's the same principle. My brain knows it's the same principle, and yet, it gives me a different happy response, the fact that I'm doing it. So I'm just continuing to move this around. Now because I'm on my industrial, you'll notice I haven't had to get another bobbin yet. Um, because this is like a normal polyester thread, my bobbins hold heaps. I mean absolutely heaps. Alright, so I'm nearly back to the start, and then I'm going to backstitch. So now if we turn it out, I'm going to just leave it inside out for the minute, but it's now a giant oversized looking jumpsuit because it hasn't got its elastic yet. So I need to overlook this seam, so I'm going to overlock this seam, and then I'm going to show you the cheats way of putting elastic in. Because I've made this for myself, I have measured the amount of elastic I need according to my waist. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlap it about a half an inch. Then I'm going to zigzag back and forth over it like a lot. And you'll be like, why am I doing it now? It's not in the garment yet. You haven't threaded it. I'm like, just bear with me. I got taught this by a guy named Josh. He was awesome. Uh, he did like design school of sewing. So I trust his knowledge over my own on this particular matter. So I now have my elastic loop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my hand into the center of the seam that we just did, which joined it, and I'm going to place the elastic up against that join. Now you're not really going to be able to see this, so I'm going to try really, really hard to describe it as best I can. So the idea is, is I'm going to sew the channel for the elastic with the elastic in it. So, I've got it flat. Here's my elastic to right here. So I'm going to stick my foot under and I'm going to sew with the outside foot just off the elastic. Now this, I've never done it with a jumpsuit, but I've done it with like pants and a bunch of other stuff. It's going to work. So we're just going to start by stitching and back stitching, and the main thing that you need to remember is to keep this flat and even. You don't want to have like more on one side than the other, so that's where most of your focus needs to lie. And then I'm just going to use my fingernails to push the elastic up against the other seam, and then just sew next to it. Now eventually, obviously, it is going to get tight, but we can just um, gather it on the part we've already sewed. And this is why I use good thread for this. 
Uh, Rasant is amazing. This will also stop any twists because it won't be able to twist because the channel is perfectly sized to the elastic that you're using. But as you can see, it is a little bit fiddly. So I'm just pushing that elastic up against the seam, making sure all the fabric is evenly flat on both sides, and then just stitching next to the elastic and then readjusting. And the reason it is a bit tricky and I have to readjust a lot is because it's a circle. So every time I'm pulling somewhere, it's pulling another part of the circle out of the way. So I've got my hand in the center. My fabric is up against the other seam. And I'm not making the channel super tight because obviously I do need to be able to allow for movement in the elastic, but I've already done like a quarter of it. And now I don't have to thread the elastic through. I love this way. This is the fiddliest it's ever been, but that's because we've got, you know, a jumpsuit as opposed to just pants or something. But I truly am a fan of this way. So if you've never tried it before, give it a go. You can even just keep one hand in here. Push it up against there and stitch. Bring it around. Like that. Needle down, reposition. So it's going to start getting tight soon. Uh, because I'm nearly halfway around. And I know it seems fiddly, but again, I've never done it on a jumpsuit. And it's still... I like it better than then having to come back and thread elastic. I hate threading elastic. Anytime I can avoid it, I tend to do so. And this is also making sure that my channel for my elastic is perfect. I'm not going to have that issue where I sewed too close and it won't fit in sections because it has to fit. I'm sewing next to it. I'm just using my finger to keep feeling around and making sure it's in there. So now I'm starting to get to the point where I need more elastic. So I'm going to start from the end I've already done and I'm just going to move this along so I can have loose elastic at the end that I'm sewing. See like that. So it gathers it there and then I've got it nice and straight here where I'm trying to sew. So again, line it up, feel my way next to it, needle down. I've got about a quarter to go, guys. I don't know. I used to, the way I used to do it with the channel, there was always one spot that was super tight and it took me ages to get the elastic through. This way, I don't know, it just works for me better, I guess. Otherwise, again, you could have just measured your channel, sewn it on, left a gap, but you would have had to also leave a gap in that first line of stitching you did, and then just stitch her shut. So I'm now back to the start. Here's the start here. So I've only got this tiny little bit to go. Once you get close to the end, it's much easier. I'm going to back stitch. And now, when I turn it out, it's done. Elastic is in the waist. You can't see any, anything. It's just beautifully gathered. Everything is stitched. And so we're all done. Um, I'm not going to show you me in it at the end because you would have already seen it at the front because I'm going to do that in a second. But I record it backwards because, you know, I just do. But there you go, guys. That was a really quick jumpsuit. I really like this fabric. 
I like how quick it was, even with a video tutorial, that was really quick. Um, and it's got pockets, and I love pockets. And they're deep pockets, they're like decent. Anyway, that is probably all for my sewing tutorials this week, uh, so I will probably see you all next week.